Very warm regards to everyone. I am Zilbar, student of English department, Maharaja Krishna Kumar Singh Ji, Pavnagar University. Today on the occasion of the Teacher's Day, we are celebrating Virtual Teacher's Day. On this occasion, I am sharing a lecture on critical essay by I. A. Richards, The Imagination. Talking about the writer, Ivory Armstrong Richards. His lifespan was from 26 February 1893 to 7 September 1979. He was an English writer of 20th century. He was English educator, literary critic and rhetorician. His work contributed to the foundation of new criticism. He was the first critic who realized the importance of psychology and the impact it made on the reader and the society. His notable works are Science and Poetry, Coleridge on Imagination, The Philosophy of Rhetoric, Speculative Instruments, Beyonds, Poetries and Complementaries. In the essay, The Imagination, I. A. Richards has given us six dis distinctive senses of the word imagination. They are production of image, the use of figurative language, a narrower sense, inventiveness imagination, scientific imagination, the sense of musical delight. Talking about the first sense, the production of image, the production of vivid images and visual images. It is commonest and the least interesting thing which is referred to by imagination. Whenever we hear a word, we automatically start picturing and image in our mind. This production of image is done by imagination. Taking an example of a word table. Whenever we hear a word table, we start imaginating a wooden plank over a wooden four legs. Next sense, the use of figurative language. The use of figurative language is done when we use metaphor or simile or any other figures of speech, especially when it is an unusual kind, are said to have an imagination. We use imagination to produce metaphor and simile. That means the imagination helps us to make the relation of abstract to physical or physical to abstract. It should not be overlooked that metaphor and simile have a great variety of functions in speech. The next sense is a narrower sense. The narrower sense is a sympathetic reproduction of other people's state of mind, their emotional state. We read different literary works and watch movies. Even in one novel, we have different characters and persons which are distinguished from each other by their character traits or many other physical nature. This happens by the power of imagination of the writer who can create thousands of characters of different type and kind and can sympathize with the character's mind. This is the reason behind the addition of this category of imagination, the narrower sense. The next sense of imagination. Inventiveness, inventiveness imagination. It is believed that this imagination is responsible for bringing together the elements which are not ordinarily connected. That means scientists have imaginative qualities. Newton, Einstein, Edison, every scientist has imagination. So this is an inventive imagination. Behind every invention, there is imagination. The next sense of imagination, the scientific imagination. This power of imagination is similar to the inventiveness imagination. It is believed that this kind of imagination is responsible for relevant connection of things ordinarily thought to be disparate kinds, which is exemplified. In scientific imagination, in simpler words, connecting things in logical order, that means finding connection between various things in a way that can lead us to a single purpose or a logic. This is an ordering of experience in definite ways or in a definite end or purpose. Not necessarily deliberate and conscious, but limited to given field of phenomena. Next, the least, last and the least sense of imagination. 
the sense of musical delight the sixth sense of imagination is the sense of musical delight and it is very important one it is about the imagination of the poet how poet writes describing the poet we can lay stress upon the availability of his experience upon the width of the field of stimulation which he can accept and the complete completeness of the response which he can make compared with him the ordinary man suppresses 9 tenth of his impulses the poet through his superior power of ordering experience is freed from this necessity impulses which commonly interfere with one another and are conflicting independent and mutually destructive in him combined into a stable poise but these impulses active in the artist are mutually modified and thereby order to an extent which only occurs in the ordinary man at a rare moment next in this essay writer has described that how does a poet creates any literary work poet makes unconsciously a selection of outfits habits impulses through a very means by which they are aroused they, then the irrelevant and the extra things are excluded then what remains he or she imposes an order on it and then almost always chief or important part of his work is kept the impulses that we have seen to be the most uniform and regular are called formal elements they are primitive and very common that means happiness fear pity joy helplessness anger anxiety and such things now poet does this now poet does this with a kind of increased organization and he or she has this heightened power of combining all the effects of formal elements into single response coleridge was the one of the great artists who pointed out that the sense of musical delight is the gift of imagination so that the imagination had the power of musical delight talking more about the impulses there are two types of impulses parallel impulses in parallel impulses all the impulses move in same direction and the other is opposite or complementary impulses in this in this kind of impulses all the impulses run in opposite direction parallel impulses they all run to some direction same direction but the poem of later there are multiple impulses they are juxtaposed they have an heterogeneity and are opposed so this is one of the main difference between the kinds of poetry there is one emotion running throughout in one and in second kind of poetry there are multiple kind of emotions and impulses running throughout another difference is of balance the first kind of poetry is balanced it holds one state of mind but in opposed impulses or conflict they are altering states of mind the last topic discussed in this essay is disinterestedness it is impartial to respond not through only one narrow channel to interest but simultaneously and coherently through many is said to be disinterestedness not disinterestedness is one who sees things only from one standpoint or under one aspect thank you and i would like to request you to attempt an online exam online test based on my lecture The link is provided in the comment section and description. Thank you.